Hello dear students, welcome to online biology bridge course class. In this video, I am going to discuss about the leaves and this is fourth part of study of the plant parts. So let us move to the study of leaf. What is leaf? See leaves are green structures. It is very common answer if somebody ask you, asks you what are leaves or what is a leaf. But biologically leaf is a flattened green outgrowth from stem of the vascular plant. In the previous video I explained about the structure of the stem. The stem contains buds at the nodal region and from those buds the leaves are producing or leaves are growing in the plant body. So leaf is flattened green outgrowth from the stem of vascular plant and it is the primary site of photosynthesis. The leaves are green in color. Reason for the green color of the leaves is due to the presence of chlorophyll and chlorophyll is a pigment that means colored substance. It is able to absorb the light radiations and those light radiations are converted into chemical energy during a process called photosynthesis. Therefore, the photosynthesis is a primary function of all the leaves. Hence, the leaves are called primary sites of photosynthesis where leaves manufacture the food for plants. Actually, the plants are preparing the food for the existence of themselves. But apart from self-existence, whatever the food is synthesized from the plants, it is utilized by the animals. The animals also utilize the food prepared by the green plants and with the help of that food only all the animals are present or all the animals are sustained on the earth planet. Without food it is impossible to exist. Without food life cannot exist. Not only food even oxygen is also important product of photosynthesis. Both of them are produced by the leaves during photosynthesis. So leaves are flattened green outgrowth of the stem. The leaves are primary site of photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, the plants synthesize their own food material. Even that food itself is utilized by the animals for the purpose of existence. Along with the synthesis of food, one more important product of the photosynthesis is oxygen. Without oxygen and without food, the life forms cannot be imagined on the earth. This is about introduction. So remember what is the primary function of leaf? It is photosynthesis. Then moving to the next one, parts of a leaf. When a typical leaf is considered, it shows following parts. Typical means a standard. When a standard leaf is considered, it shows the following parts. One is broad expanded blade. This green portion which is expanded part of the leaf, it is nothing but lamina or it is also known as leaf blade. The expanded part of the leaf is called the leaf lamina or leaf blade and it is attached to the plant stem by a stalk like structure called petiole. So another important part of the leaf, the expanded part of the leaf is called lamina or leaf blade and here you can see this stalk is called petiole. Name the stalk of the leaf or what is the name for stalk of the leaf? Answer is petiole. With the help of petiole only, the leaves are attached to the stem and 
in ngo sperms nothing but flowering plants leaves commonly have a pair of structures known as stipule which are located on each side of the leaf base now i am going to draw that structure apart from leaf blade and petiole in case of ngo sperms see the ngo sperms are known by many different names such as higher plants because they show all the superior characters as compared to algae fungi bryophyte pteridophytes and gymnosperms the angiosperms are also called flowering plants because the flower is the unique character or unique structure for the first time produced in the angiosperms apart from that in today's video i am using one more term here it is mentioned vascular plants then what is the meaning of vascular plant the plant if it contains the vascular tissues then what are vascular tissues vascular tissues are nothing but xylem and phloem then question is why xylem and phloem are called vascular tissues because both of them are involved in the conduction of water and food material just like blood in the body of animal animal body do not contain either xylem or phloem in the plant body the same function is carried out by xylem and phloem the xylem conducts the water and phloem conducts the food as they are involved in the conduction and supplementation of food and water the xylem and phloem are known as vascular tissues so xylem and phloem are completely developed their structure is very very specific in case of ngo sperms hence ngo sperms are also known as vascular plants so let us coming to the our topic of discussion here at the base of petiole let us take the diagram so that the parts will be very clear at the base of the petiole some small outgrowths are present and they are called the stipules let us draw one diagram to show the structure if this is the main stem let me erase this one this is the main stem and here the petiole is present and stalk of the leaf is known as petiole which is nothing but stalk of the leaf and leaf with the help of petiole it is attached to the stem and at the base of the petiole here at this junction remember this portion of the stem is nothing but nodal region at the nodal region only the leaves are growing because the nodal region contains the axillary buds or buds are present at the nodal region exactly at the base of the petiole the two small structures are present in ngo sperms and these small structures are called stipule so single i have marked so mentioned stipule together they are stipules at the base of the petiole some small leaf like structures pair of structures are present they are called stipules so moving to the next and very important part about the leaf it is the remaining structures of this particular image this is leaf tip also called apex apex is nothing but tip that's what it can be also considered as leaf tip here it is midrib vein and margin margin means boundary of the leaf this green expanded portion is called lamina and lamina it is bordered by leaf margin within the lamina you can see the presence of midrib and vein so let us elaborate these structures with respect to the study of a typical leaf 
so this is the leaf and this is petiole this green expanded portion entire this portion the expanded portion is called leaf lamina and this portion is apex or leaf tip both can be used and this is petiole in the center of leaf a thick line is present and this thick line it contains xylem and phloem little bit larger xylem and phloem compared to other structures of the leaf are present in this particular middle portion and this structure is called midrib the thick line which is extending from base of the leaf from leaf base it is extended up to tip of the leaf and this structure is called midrib compared to other parts of the leaves little bit larger xylem and phloem are present in the midrib area from the midrib the small branches arise and they are connected to the leaf margin up to the margin these branches are extended the branches which are arising from the midrib these branches are called veins remember veins are smaller than that of midrib and they are attached to the midrib they are arising from the midrib and extended throughout the leaf and they are attached to the margin of the leaf now the veins further undergo branching further the veins are also branching and branches of the veins are again narrower than that of veins midrib is more thicker structure veins are smaller or thin than that of the midrib and these branches which are arising from the vein veins are called veinlets the diameter of the veinlets is much narrower as compared to the veins so midrib is a thick middle part having xylem and phloem the branches of the midrib are called veins and veins further branch into many minute structures called veinlets the arrangement of veins and veinlets in the leaf lamina is called venation the arrangement of veins and veinlets about this i am going to explain in the next video the pattern of veins and veinlets arrangement is very specific in case of dicot and monocot already we have studied with reference to the root system tap root system is the character of dicot and fibrous root system is the character of monocot like that just by observing the arrangement of veins and veinlets in the leaf lamina it is possible to identify whether the leaf is of a dicot plant or the leaf is of monocot plant but before going to the explanation about the venation one more very important point that you need to study is about the color of the leaves try to understand and try to remember the leaves contain a specific green tissue and that green tissue of leaf is called mesophyll tissue the green tissue of the leaf is called mesophyll tissue the mesophyll tissue contains chloroplast i hope you are familiar with the term chloroplast is the cell organelle and inside the chloroplast the green pigment chlorophyll is present the reason why the leaves are green in color because of the presence of mesophyll tissue and mesophyll tissue contains chloroplast 
chloroplast is the cell organelle containing the green pigment is nothing but chlorophyll so due to the presence of chlorophyll only the leaves appear green in color they are able to absorb the light radiations so that they can carry out the process of photosynthesis the green pigment present in the leaves is chlorophyll and where this chlorophyll is present the chlorophyll is present within the chloroplast and chloroplast is present within the mesophyll tissue and mesophyll tissue is present in the leaf that is why the leaves appear green in color so this is about the parts of leaf and what is the primary function of the leaf and which one is the primary site of photosynthesis in the next video i am going to explain about the types of venation how to identify whether the leaf is of dicot or monocot and some very interesting facts about the leaf hope the explained part is clear for you thank you